Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here in a very sunny and still very cool uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, I'm quite excited to be here uh, right now. It's a far cry from the snow that I came from. Anyways, uh, we're checking out the Unero Fat HD, which is a really awesome bike. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. I'll show you the electrical system because that's, that's really where this bike shines. Uh, so right here in the middle of it all, you've got the Bafang BBS HD motor. This thing is putting out 1000 watts of power nominal. Uh, so that means that it puts out 1000 watts just fine. It peaks at 1500 watts of output, which is quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and this electrical system, or the electrical motor and controller is contained inside of here, inside of this metal casing, uh, which is really nice. If you wanted to do something fairly aggressive, uh, then this thing will take you know, quite a beating. <laughs> and uh, also you have a 48 volt, 15.6 amp hour battery. That's a total of about 750 watts, watt hours of, ba of battery juice. And that's a lot. <laughs> so with the large battery and a large motor, um, it's really, you know, really kind of a, in a class of its own, so to speak. Um, a, a class one electric bicycle is something with a pedal assist up to 20 miles an hour. Class two adds a throttle into the mix up to 20 as well. When you get pedal assist up to 28 miles an hour, that's considered a class three electric bicycle. This one with that kind of power output, you can imagine has a higher top speed of 28 both with the pedal assist and with the throttle. So it's kind of mulling into a unspecified area. Uh, on EBR, we call it a class four, meaning that it can go 28 miles an hour uh, or more with the throttle. And that's what this bike can do. It can go 28 miles an hour with the throttle. You'll definitely want to check your local laws and everything and make sure you got that all above board and everything. But yeah, this is a really slamming system. <laughs> it's really uh, quite a bit. Uh, other electrical features that you have on the bike is a really nice display, one that we've covered prior in other Unero bikes. Uh, it's the, specifically, it's the APT 500C. So I don't know if you can see it. Um, let's see if I can cover it up a little bit. It has a full color readout on there with kind of like an automobile style motif with a speedometer right in the middle, as well as your pedal assist level on the lower right and some pretty bold lettering. Uh, so if you press the plus or minus button, you get a little bit of feedback. The, the button kind of shakes, kind of vibrates a little bit. And one commenter, he called that haptic feedback. And then I looked it up, I was like, dude, that's a cool word. So yeah, it's, it's called haptic feedback when you get a little bit of vibration. Uh, they use that in cell phones when you're typing and things like that. But it's a really cool feature that they have in the display itself. So that kind of rings back for you. Uh, it also has a backlight functionality as well as a walk mode and for the light. So if you press and hold the plus button, that will turn on the headlight up front. So this bike electrically does come with its own headlight that is powered by the main battery pack, which is kind of neat. On the rear of the bike, you have another light. It's a red uh, rear light. However, uh, it's battery powered. It does come with the bicycle, so that's nice. That's, you know, it's kind of an appreciated effort where they put this with the bike so you don't have to just go get your own. Uh, but it comes with a little battery in there. You press the power button there. It has a couple of modes, so pretty basic. But nonetheless, it's nice that they kind of have paid attention to that detail. Uh, so yeah, that's the basics of the electrical system, other than the fact that it, the motor is a cadence-based pedal assist. So as you pedal, it counts your wheel rotations or your crank rotations, and that's what gets everything moving. Uh, and it goes through the chain. So that means that when you're pedaling, uh, and for some reason the chain breaks, then you're just like a bicycle, you <laughs> gotta fix it. Um, but with the mid-drive, you do get a lot more power. You generally get uh, better range, uh, all things considered. Uh, and these are kind of like uh, things that we've seen over time, you know, kind of a trend, not so much like proving for your results, but you know, things that we notice. Anyways, so with the electric system, you also have on the chain ring, a 46 tooth chain ring up here in the front. So this one comes by default with this larger chain ring, and that's gonna give you a little bit more power if you wanted to, say, go at a higher speed, or if you were going down a hill and you wanted to keep tension onto the pedals. So these are some nice pedals. They're 
These are some metal Welgo pedals with the reflectors. This comes with the bike. 170 millimeter uh, cranks that you have on either side. You can, if you want to, um, get an optional accessory of a 175, or if you wanted a slightly shorter crank, you can get that from the Unero website. They do have some accessories available or upgrades, and I'll kind of mention those throughout the bike. Um, the battery pack, of course, is one that, that is pretty nice. It is the Rinchen down tube mounted battery. It has a lock uh, right here, uh, as well as like a main power switch up on the battery itself, which also tells you how much battery power you've got in kind of a general sense. Kind of rests down and then locks into position. So it's a really nice battery. Uh, it's a really good one. Uh, let's see, anything else we want to talk about is the throttle is a trigger throttle. So that means that it has kind of like this pedal or paddle rather that you put your thumb down on it and it'll go <laughs> better get the brakes you do have motor inhibitors within the brakes so that means if you're holding on to the brakes then the motor won't engage that's a, a nice safety feature um, i think electrically that is the most of it so let's move on to the mechanical system so this one has a really nice electrical system it's it's pretty bombing the mechanical system by default it does have upgrades available that's kind of an indicator of what you're getting because you do have kind of like some some fairly basic uh, Wuxing uh, branded brake levers for mechanical disc brakes. Unero does provide a um, upgrade option. You can get hydraulic disc brakes on this bike, which personally I would do. Um, you have 160 millimeter rotors on the front as well as on the back for the mechanical disc brakes. Um, and that's, that's pretty good. You know, it's nice to have disc brakes on a bike that's this heavy going fast. <laughs> really nice. Uh, you have 13 gauge spokes, uh, 36 of them uh, in total, all around here with the wheels that have a punch out. These are some pretty fat wheels, and we'll kind of talk about that in a minute. But within the rim itself, it has these punch outs that not only look pretty cool, uh, but also they kind of save weight. Not that it's really a big concern on a bike with so much gusto into it, but it does save weight. It's kind of becoming an industry standard for fat tire wheels to have punch outs in them. Uh, so you have this fork here, which is the RST guide. It's a mechanical fork, meaning that has springs inside of it. You can adjust the preload and you do have a lockout and both of these controls are right here um, at your, you know, kind of at your ready. If you're up here in the cockpit, you can kind of reach over and get to them. So they're accessible, but I wouldn't say convenient because sometimes you have these extended all the way up into here. It does kind of crowd up your cockpit a little bit, but you know, it's, it's here uh, and I like it that way. Usually I just set up a shock and then go. I don't fiddle with it all that much. Uh, also, uh, you have the metal fenders, which is a really nice accessory. I really like metal fenders, a special brownie point for me <laughs> when a bike has metal fenders. Uh, so they're pretty wide, which is nice. I've seen a lot of fat tire fenders that are kind of barely making the cut, but these ones are nice and wide. They're metal, they mount onto the fork on these special spots, uh, as well as right here on the arc of the fork with the headlight. So this is good. I like this. So you have internally routed cabling uh, from everything up in the cockpit coming down through the battery or coming down, meeting with the battery and then coming down into the motor system, uh, which is really nice. You don't have a lot of zip ties and everything coming around here. Uh, also up front with the rest of the cockpit area, uh, you have a Shimano Altus trigger shifter for the mechanical system. Uh, you can use your thumb on the front and your index finger on the other side. It's a seven speed, so this is kind of a basic shifter, but it gets the job done. Um, also, you have a pretty wide handlebar set here. Um, you could get something a little bit wider if you wanted to upgrade, but you know, this one is pretty good. Uh, you have a, a slight rise. I think it's like an eight degree rise in the stem here to kind of meet you a little bit. If you wanted to make this a more comfortable ride, you would want to, let's see, this stem, you probably want to change this out for an adjustable stem that can come up and then the seat can already go down a fair ways. So I would consider this kind of like an, you could set it up to be more upright, uh, but out the, out the gate, I would say it's kind of a more forward position. Definitely not aggressive like a road bike, but still fairly forward. Of course, you have the display here that I kind of talked about uh, a little bit already. One of my favorites um, from this lineup. It's nice and small, mounts on there really well. The throttle is mounted on the left-hand side by default uh, when you get the bike out of the box. Preferably, I would want to move it to the right if it were me. I know that would kind of conflict with the shifter because the shifter has this little window right here where you can read what you're doing. Uh, so I, I recognize that there is kind of a little, you know, can't win both ways. Preferably, I like the trigger shifter on the right-hand side. 
Uh, the grips are pretty basic grips. Uh, you know, they, they work. These are kind of like friction mounted. I guess I'd call that kind of a slanted waffle pattern. So, but that's fine. Uh, with a bike with this kind of equipment, it's perfectly, you know, perfectly mated. Uh, so with the frame, you do have an aluminum alloy frame uh, that have some pretty good welds on it from what I can see. I'm not a welder. <laughs> uh, and then you also have this seat, which is the Velo Plush seat. Pretty thin, but still has some good uh, cushion to it. I like it a lot in a typical set of rails. The seat post can get fairly high. Um, let's see, uh, where's the minimum insert? Minimum insert is right around there. Okay. So with the minimum insert right around there, let's see if I can sneak down with one hand and still keep the camera. Ooh, gold medal. Okay. So you can get that fairly high. You could dive into some, <laughs> some, you know, uh, pretty serious pedaling if you had some long legs. You'd probably want longer cranks as well. Um, but yeah, you can get that fairly high and also fairly low. So you have like some options there. Um, that does come in one frame size, which is a 19 inch. And that measurement is from the center of the bottom bracket up to the bottom of the seat post. You got um, that there. Uh, so minimum standover height is pretty typical. Uh, it does have like kind of like this little lower part that a lot of mountain bikes have where the top tube doesn't come in a straight line and restrict somebody from stepping over it. Kind of has this little bend to kind of accommodate some sensitive areas, we'll say. Uh, so also moving down from that very spot, you have the adjustable kickstand that mounts in the middle of the bike. Uh, if you had a, a rear mounted kickstand, I don't know if that's gonna be compatible here. You do have the spot right there, but you know, I've had bad luck with these myself trying to source a kickstand. But it's good because you can put it right there in the middle. With a lot of the production mid-drive bikes, you do have a spot that they kind of, they kind of make here, like this one. Um, with the bolt-on ones, the, the bolt-on uh, mid-drives, then a lot of times you have to give up your kickstand space for that. So this one does fit. It's right there, right at the gate, good to go. You have your uh, rotation counter in the back wheel that is zip tied onto the frame. Uh, and of course the magnet, which is already screwed into one of the spokes for counting rotations. Uh, similar to the front, you have the Pro Max 310 uh, mechanical disc brakes with 160 millimeter rotors in the back, uh, as well as 26 by four inch tires. So I guess now would be a good time to talk about the tires in that these are 26 by four. They're a pretty fat tire. They have a lot of different uses. It's, they excel very, very well in snow and sand. So if you are commuting in Salt Lake City and it's snowing, <laughs> like myself sometimes, then having the wider tires is really nice because you have a wider surface area and it, it softens things up, it gives you more grip. It's really nice, it makes riding possible in snow. Whereas before, I mean, I guess you could say it's possible, but I don't have the kind of skill level where I can, you know, balance on the edge of a knife. So it's kind of tough. Um, but with these bikes, with the fatter tires, it makes that possible, as well as sand. If you're in very loose terrain, mud, sand, snow, these kind of bikes can do it because of the fatter tires. Now there is a compromise, of course. Uh, the first one that a lot of people are considered or concerned about is weight. That having such a big wheel with a big tire and having to have the frame be bigger to accommodate that adds a lot of extra weight in the regular bike realm. When you get into electric bikes, weight is far less of a concern. <laughs> so, uh, so the big one is kind of out the window. You know, you can put a bigger motor system on here, like this one, a bigger battery like this one, that more than covers it uh, as far as performance goes, what you're gonna be able to see for how long you can go and endurance and things like that. So with that out of the way, the other concern is that it's, it's just less efficient. And that's something that does affect the electrical system, of course. If you had this exact bike with thinner wheels, then that would go a lot farther on the same battery pack. Uh, so that's why when you get into range estimates for a bike like this, it's pretty tough to estimate because you could ride it kind of slow, kind of ginger, and get a really high amount of range because it has a larger battery pack to compensate for the extra draw that the system is likely going to do. This this bike is made for someone who is gonna go out in the snow in rough conditions. It's possibly for hunting or outdoors and longer, you know, longer stretches of road. So they put uh, a larger battery for that intended use. So if you were using this for commuting, which you totally can, it's got fenders, lights, and a rack. So it's kind of outfitted to be a commuter. <laughs> if you used it for commuting, you'd probably get a fair amount of range out of it because you're not gonna be using it in, you know, such extreme conditions as say, uh, hunting or something like that. 
Anyway, so aside from the, the wheels, let's talk about the, the rack because it occurred to me that I kind of skipped over that. So this bike does come with the bolt-on metal rack uh, that is already tied into the bosses for the frame uh, on the front and also on the bottom. So this rack totally covers the metal fender in the rear, which is nice. Also has the pannier rails. So you have these rails up here and in case your pannier for some reason has a different sizing uh, requirement, you also have some rails there and I, I can't imagine anyone would have a pannier that big. But anyways, <laughs> you got the top mounted ones as well as the lower ones if you wanna keep your weight lower for, I don't know if you're gonna use this as a road bike, but it's a good rack. Also has these springs for the little cover here if you wanna put your gloves in it or something small that you're okay losing if you go over some really rough terrain. Also a license plate mount. I think I have a license plate at home. I'm gonna see if it fits, um, but little license plate mount. Um, it's too bad that the light doesn't go all the way in, you know, doesn't extend all the way in there. They don't have that option either, but you know, what are you gonna do? One last thing I did wanna mention before we go on the ride is the seven speed Shimano Altus uh, system. So it doesn't have a very wide range of gears. You got a one by seven, but when you have a bike with such an enormous amount of power <laughs> that's coming out of it, then you kind of skip through all the gears. So for So uh, one thing I can tell you uh, right away is that this thing has a lot of power, a lot. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it definitely jumps. It's got a lot that's, uh, I don't wanna say it's uh, uh, intimidating, but it's definitely, uh, I mean, you kinda know what you're getting into if you're looking for a bike like this. It's got a lot of power. It really picks up uh, because of that thousand watt nominal rating. Uh, when you hit, on th hit the throttle, I did notice that when you got your finger on the throttle and you press the pedal assist up or down, the throttle is actually capped by the level of assist that you're on. So if you got it in assist level one and you hit the throttle all the way down, then the throttle is only gonna go to, I, I guess I'll say pedal assist level one and then it's gonna stop there. And then when you press the button up to number two with your thumb on the throttle all the way also, then the throttle kicks up and goes up another notch. So the throttle is, I don't want to say limited, but it does follow the pedal assist rating. Uh, so yeah, the throttle follows the pedal assist rating, which, you know, some people like it, some people don't. Some people see it as a safety feature, other ones see it as a limitation. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a, you know, a half, uh, half empty, half full uh, kind of a thing. 
Uh, personally, I don't mind it at all. Uh, the pedal assist does have a cadence-based pedal assist, uh, which is really nice if you have knees uh, or feet or legs <laughs> of some kind that are kind of going out and you need to kind of relieve the tension. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of a lot of customers like that when I used to work in retail that would want to get an electric bike so that they could get their legs moving, but they didn't want to be forced to keep tension onto the system. And so that's really good for a cadence-based pedal assist because you can literally just turn the pedals, <laughs> literally just turn the pedals as a formality and the electric system will get going. Uh, and yeah, that's really nice. I like that about this personally. Um, I don't know if I would use this as the most aggressive downhill bike. It does have a, a suspension up front, which kind of eases the pain of going over bumps, say if you have some arthritic hands. But um, based on the weight of this thing, it's gonna be really kind of difficult to control if you did some super technical off-road. And I'm talking like, you know, maybe mid-range downhill kind of stuff would be pretty, uh, pretty intimidating if you're on this bike. For the lightweight trails, it would totally do it. It would do lightweight trails like, like a dream. It would ride very, very smooth, very nice on account of the suspension, also the wider tires, the seating position, it would do that very well. So I like that about this. One thing about these bikes that I kind of mentioned earlier is that they do really well in those conditions for sand and snow and also for trails. When you get them on the road, they are less efficient and turning the bikes are like, it's a learning curve. I guess I'll put it that way. They work just fine. There's plenty of people who use these bikes as daily drivers, but there is a little bit of a learning curve. Maybe not a learning curve, there's a, a different feeling when you're riding a fat tire bike on the road. I'll kind of show you the wheel and you can kind of get a sense that it kind of has like a crown to the tires. When you're turning, it's as if you get to a point where the tires kind of want to resist you a little bit and you got to nudge them on and keep turning a little bit and then they will comply. <laughs> it's really kind of a personalizing what a tire does because it's just a tire. But anyways, here, check it out. I'll show you the tire. Okay guys, thanks for joining me on the review of the Fat HD from Unirow Electric Bikes. I forgot to mention that the reason why I'm here in Las Vegas, Nevada is because this is actually kind of their American hub. They have their warehouse here for sending out the bikes as well as they do battery repair very close by as well as motor support. So even though it's a Chinese company, you're getting USA support for it, which is a pretty cool thing, all things considered. So yeah, thanks for joining me on the review of this bike. If you want to see the full details for all of the specifications, you can go to electricbikereview.com and look for it as well. You can find me sometimes hanging out at the forums on Electric Bike Review. Other than that, I will catch you guys later and ride safe.